Well, good morning from Northern California. This is Willie Paul. This is a, a second installment of conversations with Willie. Um, I'd like to have my guest uh, from Santa Cruz, Vic, introduce himself, and then we'll we'll jump into the future. Vic, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good, Willie. How are things on your end? <laughs> uh, clean and clear. I'm happy to. I'm happy to. I love it and talk to you, man, because you got some vibe I need. Well, ditto. Um, it's not too often you get the synergy of conversations that we've had, huh, Willie? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Let's yeah, see I, where some of these I, go. I, I, in fact, interviewed Vic a long time ago at Plant Shifter. That's interesting. I just remember that. You remember that interview? Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's, here we go. <clears throat> when I when I first um, you came across, I actually thought you were in the UK. I didn't know you were another American buddy. <laughs> I don't know. I, I turned you English there. <laughs> but we are one of the world, huh? We're looking to to make some differences out there and have some good ideas that we'd like uh, to share with other people. So let's do that. Okay. What uh, what would you like to talk about? Well, um, by the way, anybody that wants to uh, get a hold of my stuff. Um, you can go to yes. com. the spelling of my name, V-I-C-D-E-S-O-T-E-L-L-E, -E -L -L -E, com. You can find all kinds of cool stuff there about what I'm into um, relative to sustainability, um, global myth transformation, um, changing of normal. Uh, I'd like to get you guys over to changingnormal.com and become a part of that community as well. So um, Willie and I talked a little bit earlier, and... We want to share some of our stuff, and Willie has got an amazing uh, model on permaculture and new myth generation, and uh, I think we should start there, Willie, and talk about what you're up to with this model. Okay, I'd love to. I'd, I'd like to suggest that we, we get busy as a people uh, looking at how we're going to rebuild the future after a, a potential crash, a global financial and uh, environmental crash, so... I'm all up for talking about what happens after that crash. Cool. So you're pretty optimistic about the crash happening, huh? <laughs> well, that's a double-edged sword. I'm probably, I probably would say that I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. Um, not, not that I'm going to like it, but I'm going to try to prepare for uh, what happens after it. Yes. Yeah, and, and I would agree with you too in terms of something is going down. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's not a positive going down this time. And, and you know, I think it's going to be worse than what normal ups and downs are. You know, economically, ecologically, everybody knows things are a bit of a mess, too, in, in having a downturn. Um, and, and socially, too. I mean, the implications. And <clears throat> a lot of what you and I are about is preparing and foreseeing and, and um we're optimists, right? We're really optimists about an opportunity that the this downfall could actually generate for us to bring in something that's even cooler for our planet. Yeah, I hope that the uh, the pending culture is more uh, egalitarian, that it collapses, that it won't have rich and poor. Yeah, that we'll all we'll all be uh, uh, in the same game, trying to grow vegetables and barter with our neighboring tribes. So, yeah. yeah, the future looks pretty interesting. Yeah, it does. We've got some amazing people out there. Um, I guess we can include ourselves in that, huh, Willie? Uh, <laughs> some great ideas and, and, and a lot of us, you know, turning them into applied make it happen kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, I'm a real believer that we've got to get to a certain threshold of the people that are actually turning these ideas into applied action. And I don't think we're there yet. We're not seeing the rapid change that I think is necessary in order to really make the difference, to, to make the leap over into uh, a different world culture that's healthier for more of us than is happening right now. Yeah, that's why I think we both agree that uh, permaculture can be a, a social change and a life a life changing uh, system where we get back to a nature based value set and we eat healthier and we have more free time as a result of less uh, bombardment of advertising and purchasing and all the other crap that's going to be crashed soon. 
Do you agree that permaculture is the way to go? Yeah, I think it's one of the more positive frameworks for transformation and change. Um, I, I do see many others out there that are also um, very useful and healthy. My initial studies of permaculture, um, I put a little checkbox to it saying, yes, this is, this is one that's going to really make a difference. And it's very systemic in nature. It's holistic. You know, it's not just about growing a garden or something like that. It's really looking at systemic change around um, what a community needs to not only survive, but thrive. And um, so I would agree with you. And I know a lot of your frames uh, and conversations kind of use that as a frame of reference, right? Permaculture? Right, exactly. I, I would extend it then to uh, alchemy, uh, a, new, a new sort of way to look at power and energy and different levels of transformation. Uh, so alchemy is an, another component. And also, we both have looked at myth, uh, myth uh, extensively. And I see that we both kind of are in tune with the new global mythologies based on uh, sustainability and permaculture. Uh, those are now coming into play and helping us, uh, helping guide us to this post-crash future. Right. And I'll, I'll um, mention to our audience that, uh, at least for me, mythology is, is much more than studying the Greek history and, and the, the stories of the gods and um, that mythology is actually, uh, is not myth either. Myth, often we use in our society, is this negative thing, like uh, wives' tales, or, oh, that was just a myth. For me, mythology is a neutral standpoint. It's a foundation for which any and all communities stand on. Typically, it's unconscious or unaware, unless you're a student of mythology. Um, but as I went deeper and deeper into how communities make choices and make decisions and create their their societies, uh, at the deepest level, our choices are based on the, our belief systems, which are fueled by um, an inherent myth or mythology, a way of being that we have been brought up in our culture, whatever culture that may be. And what I'm seeing happen now is, is the collection of mythologies that are out there. I'm, I'm a student of Joseph Campbell, who studied the world mythologies, um, that they're, they're starting to converge and in many places collide, um, and there's a lot of friction around these um, myths and belief systems um, rubbing against each other. Um, and what I'm hoping is, is that it doesn't just destroy all of us in our, um, our immaturity, but that we find ways to bring and integrate and converge these, these collective myths into what Willie and I are talking about as a global myth, a global mythology, which becomes... Uh, a, a society of understanding that's planetary based. It still has, and I, I want to make a very important point because often people think, oh, it, it, this, this is not about globalization. This is, this is something totally different than globalization. It's not about monoculture. It actually creates a place for diversified uh, culture systems and ways of being and improves and enhances the ability to, for each of us as individuals um, to stand out. Ironically, when you create a global myth, it becomes the vessel for each of one of us as individuals to have our own independence, our own identities, uh, separate uh, and yet connected to a, a unified system. So I just uh, wanted to mention a little bit about that, uh, my, my understanding of myth and mythology. That's good. Vic, tell us a little bit about how you would uh, teach a 16-year-old in Sacramento to start writing a myth, uh, start writing a global myth, a, a global story. How would you, how would you give give them tools or empower them to look at that assignment? Oh, that's a good one. You know what comes to me on that um, is I would start with their dream work, their dreams, their actual dreams. What are they dreaming about? What are the things? What are their minds telling them while they're asleep? Uh, and, and look into those because often they're twisted or they're, they feel twisted. They're, they're things that don't make sense necessarily. And I think it's a good place for um, even more so youth um, to become aware of how our belief systems shape our world. And when there's something that's not right or doesn't feel right, including a dream, we often abandon it or push it out rather than bring it in. 
and uh, in the dream world um, to start experimenting with the stories that emerge from their own um, sleep time and uh, and then go into the not only just the mental thinking of what you think is happening in the dreams <clears throat> but also what emotes what what's coming from the heart in the gut when you tell the story of your dream and start there and and in that begin to shape uh, a new story of our world okay let's uh let's turn that on its head if we can uh would you recommend that uh this person uh start writing mythology from their fears not their dreams but their conscious fears is that a possible I think that's that possible. I mean, for me, I, I've got dreams that are wonderful, and lately I've got more dreams that are kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, and good. That, that from the fear, from that place of fear, um, stepping into the fear and, and addressing it and going face-to-face -face with it uh, and working with it, not trying to fight it so much, you know, and kill it, um, but to work with it, I think, can be very powerful, transform um, transformational kind of work. To the place of, you know, uh, what you and I also like to talk about, which is the alchemical uh, process, alchemy. Right. Well, you know, Campbell's uh, hero journey initiation still ring true for me, I, I assume for you. Those are tools that, that kids can use to, to frame their uh, story writing. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right. Um, that's some really good work um, to get things started um, or maybe to fuel it once they get started because it, you get stuck when you go into these, um, these strange places, the dream work and the labyrinths that are taken that take you into places that maybe the door that you don't quite want to open yet. Um, and then what would be really interesting, Willie, you know, is they're doing this individually to this point, but imagine the next step in a a room full of students, for example, is that they looked at combining their dreams. They started looking at things that were common between the dreams or different or both and began to build a collective story around independent dreams. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. That's uh, very empowering. I think it could be really empowering, not only as a, each individual, but then as a group which yes. can grow the collective mythology that we're speaking of, and who knows where that'll go. Exactly. Well, one of the things that I have, have looked into uh, in part uh, are new symbols that come with these dreams and fears and story. Uh -huh. uh, symbols in uh, alchemy, symbols in permaculture, uh, now that's fairly radical. I don't. I don't think uh, there's a lot of folks out there looking at the symbology of permaculture per se. But I think if we're going to write new mythologies on that foundation, we need to look at the power of archetype and symbol in that in in that endeavor. And yeah. so it's it behooves us to look at uh, seeds and soil and and tools and other, other symbologies that will help make that collective uh, consciousness, right? Yeah, agreed. In fact, I think you should elaborate a little bit more about some of the symbology work that you're uh, involved with, because I would agree with you that, you know, there's always going to be a language that describes and actually ties individual thinking and awareness together into an, a collective awareness. And the symbology, including language, to me, language is a symbol set, uh, whether it's English or Chinese or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. needs to evolve. And um, I think that you're onto something in terms of, of experimenting with a new set of symbols that can help us speak of and speak to this new cultural change that's happening and where we're headed. So can, can you elaborate a little bit on what you're up to? Does this correlate with your new myth generator map or are we um is it before that no no it's it's uh it's definitely a it part is. of that that map uh that chaotic map i did um some of the symbols of permaculture include seeds which you know are about growth mm -hmm. uh, you could you could look at the uh community well as a place of community of of communication 
uh, fire would be uh, transformative, uh, burning, uh, smoke, uh, you know, fire is uh, cooking, heat, survival. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out what sort of common kind of everyday symbols can mean more than just uh, the surface. So uh, earth-oriented yeah. then, it's very earth-oriented symbology, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, that's 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 of permaculture the, of the matter, you know, like you say, you know, folk. It's earth, wind. What is it? Earth, air, fire, water. Would it correlate at some level in terms of uh, the types of symbols would emerge from that set, or is it totally different? No, no, I think it's uh, it's not that far out or or far off. I think. Uh, the symbols of uh, the, the direction can be transmuted into uh, common symbols of air and earth. That's that's very possible. I don't think it's I don't think it's a very far out idea. I just think it, it it's it's going to take us uh, some some um, diligence to get past the fear of the crash or of our own deaths, perhaps, into the next phase of uh, being human. Uh, it's not permaculture. Really, isn't very complicated. It, it just it's not a it's not a system that's in place. It's not a value set that's in place yet, and so it's uh, struggling to be defined and, and symbolized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but it's all nature based. Yeah. Looking at your map here, you um, co seem to be correlating a triad of alchemy, myth, mythology, and permaculture. Is that right? Yeah, with sacred, sacred in the middle. That's the the model I've been using yeah. for a long time. I just ex I extended it into this roadmap uh, vision it, as well. It's a very another common thread of conversation we'll have to have uh, around the idea of sacred. Can you speak to your your definition of sacred here? Well, sacred is the hard part. Um, I haven't uh, formulated a lot of definition because I, I want other people to help do that with me. Uh, like I want to leave that. I wanna, yeah, I want to leave the door open on sacred. Mm -hmm. uh, but for now, I'm just saying to people that I think that uh, our family and our, our nature, our planet are all sacred uh, without, without uh, you know, pinpointing too much uh, definition. You know, I... Um often go back and study the uh, uh, what do you call it the uh, epitomology I'm going to say epitomology <laughs> the, <laughs> the, um, the study of words What's, what am I looking for I can't think of the name um, me neither and, and, uh, and you're going back to where they originated and uh, sacred and um, correlates with sacrum yes which you know kind of be between the hips <laughs> um, which is related to the greatest, most sacred thing that ever happened um, and where the awe originally occurred, in my opinion, which was when another being came through the legs of a woman. It's like, oh, my God, <laughs> I mean, literally <laughs> this new life being formed and sacred. Um, that word sacred came from that place of this new life coming into the world. Uh, I wonder how it will be similar or different in terms of the bridge to this new world that we speak of. I've uh, one th other thing I've studied on sacred is is that there's this thing that we use a lot called technology, quote unquote. And I think we actually misuse the word and we think it's a you know a phone or a widget or something like that, which it is. But to me, it's an outcome of our knowledge, our understanding. Uh, uh -huh. And when you combine the two words, sacred technology, imagine everything we created having a sense of reverence to its manifestation rather than just a bottom line. And that it's a part of our future. So for me, sacred is um, going to be evolutionary in terms of the, the traditional uh, earth orientations of the way mother has, uh, the mother earth has created matter. And now mm -hmm. us as a voice or vehicle and, and an extension of, of the greater mother, uh, our creative processes are, are generating these technologies, which is the manipulation of mother's matter. But to incorporate whatever we would create in our God creative way and always follow a sense of sacredness in the process. 
to me, that's missing right now in the world. Well, that's a very fascinating um, segue to to sort of close this uh, discussion out today. I'm interested in following up on your sacred technology because I have listed new businesses in green tech in this map. And yeah, that's sure. really what you're talking about. You're talking about technology that uh, is a benefit for everybody. It doesn't pollute, is low cost, whatever, recycled material. Uh, so that's that's right on that's right on the on the curve of this uh, process I've uh, I've delineated. Well, good. There's more to talk about then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, my friend. Uh, yeah, this is just installment one with Vic. We'll look to uh, find some other stuff to talk about. I, I want to go back, of course, to generating a new myth, and perhaps Vic and I can uh, write something and share that process uh, on video. That'd be interesting. Yeah, let's do that. And we both got sites, you know, folks, we're going to be pointing you to different things uh, on my site and on Willie's site to absorb, uh, maybe start some dialogues yourselves beyond these videos. We're really looking to try to build community around these conversations uh, and accelerate something to beyond what we even um, have thought was possible. Right, exactly. Um, so Vic, I will, uh, put this thing on YouTube for us and, uh, look cool. forward to another installment. I want you to do me a quick favor at the end of this is send me an email. Tell me exactly what the credits will be for you so I can put those in text. Sure. Uh, my process and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap this, we'll wrap this up for today. Sounds good. Okay, Willie, until the next one. Bye everyone. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye Vic. Have a good one.